We welcome in our man Dave Aiken. Hey, hey now. Hey, hey. He's here. What's going on? Well, a few things to talk about. Interesting audio here from the Miss Universe pageant. Now, they still was, do that? They do. It was held uh, last weekend. And I don't know who the winner was. Uh, I think Miss USA. What? Oh, yeah. Look there's you sitting up. Rig. Well, I think Miss USA won. And I think if memory serves, and Biggie, feel free to jump in, isn't she the one who the contestants claim it was rigged for her to win Miss USA? Yes. Okay. Well, there's a lot going on here. It's real deep. I'm into it. Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> Who the knew? Is yours. Why didn't know we had an expert in the room? <laughs> well, Good gracious. this caught my eye. Mm -hmm. uh, the person who owns Miss USA mm -hmm. recently bought Miss Universe. Uh -huh. Miss Universe was also held in the USA for the first time. The, co mm. the competition, I believe. Where do they do something like that? In Miami? I believe so. Okay. Uh, or, or maybe not the first time, but this time. Mm -hmm. So... Then Ms. USA won, mm -hmm. and the other contestants were like, mm -mm. Oh, really? Something's up here. You recently bought the competition. Mm -hmm. You already owned Ms. USA. Mm -hmm. You bought Ms. Universe. Mm -hmm. It was held in the USA, mm -hmm. and somehow Ms. USA just happens to win. And they're saying she's not even the best Ms. USA we've had. Well, remember the Ms. USA, if, if memory serves, Ms. USA pageant was dogged by, she had made some videos for, like, one of the big sponsors mm. already had mm -hmm. before she had even won. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And so people thought, well, how did they know she was going to win? Oh, the fix I mean, how, how are these commercials on the air now if they didn't already know the fix was in for her to yeah. win in the well, first Well, now, place? wait a minute. They, yeah. Maybe they did uh, commercials with several different people. At, like uh, the Super Bowl, the moment somebody wins it, there's the T-shirt. There's the newspaper printed, you know. Yeah, maybe. I, mean, I haven't yeah. heard that yeah. come up. I understand there's shenanigans in place what caught everybody's ear was the way the contestants introduced themselves <laughs> and apparently they've been doing this several years they come up and they say like you know usa or spain you know whatever it is yeah they're really kind of playing to the mm -hmm. the back row as we used to Uruguay. <laughs> well yeah yes yes and you know I've had a little TV experience, was on a little show called Wheel of Fortune a few years ago, uh -huh. and we were told during prep, yell it to Vanna. Yell it, yell, when you say a letter, Vanna was all the way across the room. She's 40 yards from me, and you say it. 40 yards. She's way across. The, <laughs> it's impossible. Way across the room from me. Oh! <laughs> well, that's how I said it. In fact, I did call that letter. I called an R. It's a very common letter. Which wasn't there, by the way. And I said... Arr, and uh, no. Nope. When, when I got back, everybody that watched it signs at the airport, <laughs> just an R, Arr. just the R. <laughs> A lot of people said to me, "Man, you seemed real special. You were yelling those letters <laughs> like that." <Especially> come, <laughs> come big R. Well, they tell you to do that. They tell you to do they that. Do, if you do watch Wheel, they do kind of oversell the letters. But and they're not saying countries. No. They're home countries. We have a little <laughs> montage of, well, and this is just like in real time, they come up to the microphone. Oh, This is an alphabetical order, but what everybody really zeroed in on was France and the way Miss France said her name or her country's name, which is coming up here in a few moments. Ah! Right there. <laughs> right there. Did you hear? Fred, <laughs> it's Fred, she's screaming. Ah! <laughs> Somebody get up to help her? Is she okay? <laughs> Sounds like a tennis player yeah. in mid serve. I know. <laughs> Just screaming at the top of her lungs. Oh, Miss France. Uh, ah! We'll never. <laughs> I know. I mean, they used to have, uh, I mean, look, I haven't watched a beauty pageant since I was a boy, but oh, yeah. the, the announcers used to do that. 
yeah. Miss Uruguay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They would mark. You know, they'd, the they'd have the dulcet tones of the announcer. Uh-huh. Poor Miss France. <laughs> I think she was. I think she was doomed from the start. Don't you? Yeah. I don't think she could win after saying something like that. I didn't know there was so much controversy in this year's Miss Universe, but there is. We break it for you. That's not the one Trump <laughs> owned, is it? He, he owned Miss America, didn't he? For a time. No, he, he was Miss USA. Miss USA. Oh, he was. Yes. But not anymore. No, that, that was sold. sold. Now, speaking of controversy, yesterday, I don't know if you paid attention to this Ticketmaster uh, thing up on Capitol well, Hill. Well, uh, I'm not worried. I'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, let me, get, let me tell you what A little question and answer up there. A little Q&A with, some, uh, with Congress. The CEO. Yes, the CEO of Ticketmaster was up there, and a lot of these folks in Congress, Republican and Democrat, really held their feet to the fire because, of course, there was a debacle when it came to Taylor Swift ticket sales. They apo- the CEO of Ticketmaster apologized to... I'm so sorry. <laughs> Once again, I apologize to El Salvador. Everybody. Costa Rica. Apologize to everybody. Apologize. Oh, Miss. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We don't know what France had to say about this. But he apologized to everybody that could possibly be listening. And they called Ticketmaster perhaps a monopoly that has a monopoly on this ticket. Because selling. they bought AEG. Yes. So each congressperson that spoke. A lot of them took it upon themselves to use Taylor Swift songs or song no, lyrics no, no. in their address. Amy Klobuchar, Democrat, Minnesota. I believe in capitalism, and to have a strong capitalist system, you have to have competition. You can't have too much consolidation, something that unfortunately for this country, as a uh, ode to Taylor Swift, I will say we know all too well. All Too Well is our song. You're connecting the dots for us here. <laughs> That's for all the too- non-tweens in the room. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that is Because I would have never known. That <laughs> is All oh. Too Well by... <laughs> by and she, I bet the CEO didn't pick up she on it. Well, she announced it. Richard Blumenthal, Democrat, Connecticut, anti-hero. Ticketmaster had the temerity to imply that tobacco involved in pre-ticket sales was Taylor Swift's fault because she was failing to do too many concerts. And may I suggest respectfully that Ticketmaster ought to look in the mirror and say, I'm the problem. It's It's me. me. That's a Taylor Swift lyric from her hit from last year, Antihero. Incidentally, fast moving up my chart as Taylor Swift's best song. Already? Really? <laughs> song's pretty fire, man. It is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You you could co sign on oh, that? Oh, yeah. The song is yeah. straight fire. And I don't say that lightly. I <laughs> don't. don't. I don't. Every time I hear it, I'm like, yes. I mean, yeah, I love. And you know the thing about Taylor? What? <laughs> Tell us. Okay. Two or three years ago, Taylor comes out with an album, and she has all these big hits on it. I had seen her in concert already. She's had two or three albums in a row with huge hits. And I always think, that's it for Taylor. She cannot come up with anything better. And then she does. And um, Antihero is like my favorite Taylor Swift song. I don't know. Where knocking what out of the way? Well, I love uh, Shake It Off. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I And then I love, oh, Bad Blood. I love Bad, Bad Blood. Bad Blood is really good. Fire. Straight fire is what I would call it, but this one may be the best. Ah, Lee, mm-hmm. I thought the Senate or the, the Congre- congressional hearings would be embarrassing, mm. and we got a forty-something and a fifty-something discussing Tay Tay. <laughs> Big year officially a forty-something. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah, it hurts, doesn't it? Uh, Mike Lee, Republican, Utah. The song he references is called karma i have to throw out uh, in deference to my daughter eliza one more one more taylor swift quote karma's a relaxing thought aren't you envious that for you it's not that's all i've got to say thank you she curses in this one what word gd you just heard it I tried to talk over it. <laughs> he tried. Radio edit. I didn't, I didn't hear a word. <laughs> I'm well, sorry. Listen, I made the executive decision before this show. I was going to cut a little bit of that out. I said, no, God. She's an artist. I'm, an artist. I'm not going to mess with her art. Dude, I'm playing. I will not. You don't censor the nipples on a Gauguin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I 
about here now. Hold, hold on. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I can't shine a spotlight on it. Did we hear it already? Day? That was it. Okay. I talked over. <laughs> shine a spotlight I'm talking over. over. I'm trying to talk over it. But anyway. Those were all the different folks up in Congress. Yeah. Uh, now, now we'll see results. <laughs> <laughs> Look yeah. to this day, young so. Taylor Swift I fans. I think so. Well, what are they going to do? Break them up? Like Standard Oil back in the 1920s? <laughs> I think they should, don't you think? <laughs> well, they, they're they the ones that would have to do it. I mean, they're, they're it's a monopoly. I, mean, I do think that's a possibility. I, think. I mean, there are other ticket outlets out there, but not as big as them and not as... Mm-hmm. I don't know what the percentage of, of the market is theirs, but... A, good portion of it at least 70 percent at least and, and some of the smaller ones they own mm-hmm. hey, the, the guy, secondary market but guy, you know look historically big the big businesses they'll they'll talk to the, the people behind the scenes and say look you're not touching us okay here's a hundred thousand dollars mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. i see what <laughs> you're saying yeah you get your uh, lobbyist involved yeah. or whatever but they they do i remember being taught this in school is that sometimes businesses become so large they become a monopoly and they are broken up you said standard oil that became what exxon uh, and became Exxon Mobil. Mobile. Mobile, yeah. yeah. They they uh, broke yeah. it up. And uh, the Bell system. I mean, yeah. all these yeah. all these companies. Atlantic are, Bell. Yeah. So it has Ma happened. Ma Bell. Yeah. You know, the guy from Ticketmaster said that the big problem with the Taylor Swift ticket sales was bots placed out there buying tickets, driving up prices, and everybody. But some argue that they put the bots out, out there. there. Yeah. It's really frustrating. But it's just nice to see Congress folks in Congress, senators bloviating. You know, doing tickets. yes. You know, they can just yell at this. Guy. Regardless of party lines, no, yeah. right? They, well, we're just going <laughs> to yell at you for three hours. That's what they did yesterday on Capitol Hill. There's another. This is uh, with technology and entertainment as well. Uh, I don't know if this will affect anybody here. Netflix is planning to crack down on password share, sharing outside of households, which I know goes on a lot. And they used to say, go ahead and do it. You know, some used to say, I think HBO Max said, share. We want you. We want to get mm-hmm. out there. Netflix says now they're going to roll out a paid option for those who want to share their accounts so that it won't be. You have to pay extra to share the account, basically. If and, you had to guess mm-hmm. how many people listening to this program right now. Mm-hmm. Are using "quote unquote" a bootleg Netflix. You know they they have access to the, all the Netflix program, but they're not paying for it. I'd say twenty. Like it's a parent or a sibling. Twenty five percent of higher. People. Yeah, I think higher than that. I yeah. was thinking thirty to forty percent. You may be right. But I, you don't you and your mom share? Yeah, I mean, if this is going to affect us because mm-hmm. she just won't have Netflix, she says she's fine. But my, my sister, that's what moms always say. My yeah. sister and my nephew share. Uh, he's got Netflix. She uses his password. She's got HBO. He uses her password. That's just how they do it. Some do invite it. YouTube TV, you can share it. Yeah, they don't mind, do they? No. no, I got my... uh, I signed my sister up, uses Mm -hmm. it. My my kid uses it Mm -hmm. all over the country. With your password. Yeah. This is the COO of Netflix. There will be um, current members that are unhappy with this move. We'll see folks come on as new subscribers, essentially borrowers creating their accounts or incremental monetizations. This is an expert on media from USA Today. I think everyone will take a page out of Netflix's book. It's about getting subscriber growth back on track for the company. Netflix held off as long as they could before they ultimately had to do that. That's it. You've heard it. They will start cracking down on password sharing. Do you think it'll cut into their uh, numbers? Think people will drop it? Uh, no, I think they'll gain people from it. I think people mm-hmm. like it, get hooked we'll on do it. it. Le- so, yeah. for instance, yeah. if you're scamming off your mother-in-law, yeah. you'll start paying for it? Yeah. Like, my sister has it and lets her son use the password. I think he'll get it, you know, because he, he's hooked on it. You know, he likes those streaming services, mm-hmm. Netflix included. Netflix is one that I almost never watch. Uh, just, I mean, what am I watching? Stranger Things and a couple of others. That's it's, just it. They, I yeah. have so many different little things now mm-hmm, yeah. that keep me around. Like Apple TV, mm-hmm. nothing for me. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso. Except, Ted Lasso. That's, that's just it. it. That's and it's it. one of my favorites. Me too. So what are you going to do? You know. And I'll tell you what. Congressional hearings. Get me in front of Congress. <laughs> I, I, you know what? Get me uh, Amy Klobes. <laughs> and let me tell you what uh, Paramount Plus did. You know, yeah. Biggie and I watched that show 1923. Okay, but Biggie kept coming in here and saying, "God, have you seen the last 1923?" And I'd say, "Yeah, I have." And he'd say, "Oh, so this happened?" And I said, "I, I didn't see that." And he goes, "Right, you're behind." Well, what I was you doing, guys weren't synced up. No, because what I was doing was I was watching it on television. There were a couple of episodes that were on television, just regular old. 
TV, the Paramount Network. Mm. And uh, they said, here's a special preview of 1923. And I saw two episodes, and then it didn't come back for a while. And Biggie was way ahead of me. Mm. And I said, what am I doing? What, what is wrong? Well, the rest of it was on Paramount Plus. So they got only. me only. And I didn't have that at the time. So my wife and I said, all right, we're going to bite the bullet and get Paramount Plus to watch the rest of 1923. We catch up. And they say, okay, new episodes available in a month. So they're taking a month break, meaning, because we got one month for free. And so the first month won't get me there. You know, I have to wait and get an extra mm-hmm. month. So I think that was planned. You know, they take that gap. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I thought hooked. that was yeah, very get shady. Hooked. Get me hooked. And now I'm really, because, golly, that's a good show. Told you. Harrison, for <laughs> you were right. I watched it while you were in Florida. I almost called you. It I was know. so good. How about when they see the washing machine? <laughs> I know, I know. They're like they see a washing machine for the first time. It's, it's I love this time frame right here because it's a mix of cars mm-hmm. and horses still on the road. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a guy on the side of a, a store selling a washing machine, and they're like, "These will never take off." Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all say, "Yeah." Come on. Is he supposed to be? Is like his great great grandfather? Somebody supposed to be from Dances with the Wolves or something? Or, or is that? Did I just? No, I don't hear know that, that in passing. You may have just heard that. Yeah. This is the. I think you're, they're trying to connect Costner. Yeah. This is definitely. I see. This is a definitely okay. a relative to Cos. They have the same last name. And yeah, it's just right. it's the same family. Yeah. But I don't think the. It's not the Costner character from. No, oh, no, no, no. I don't uh, think no. so. That was a drunk thought. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen any of shows. I show. almost called Biggie a four. I don't, I don't I'm not crazy enough to buy Paramount I don't Plus. Like that fit. No, <laughs> that stupid show. It's just it's a knockoff. A sequel to Dances with the Wolf. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's talk. Let's talk about Congress again. And in this case, Senator Lindsey Graham. What does he and Chris Kelly have in common? Well, we're going to tell you. We have a lot in common. <laughs> Senator Graham from South. South Carolina, lifelong bachelor, was asked about on the Today Show about the classified documents being found at President Biden's home inside his garage near his Corvette. And Lindsey Graham said, well, I'll tell you one thing. You won't find any classified documents at my place. They had found out that there were classified information in Biden's home days before the 2022 election. And they said on it, that's what I want to understand. And if you come to my house, you'll find Chick-fil-A bags all over the floor. But you're not going to find any classified information. (laughs) Boom. (laughs) It's like he lives in your car. (laughs) Yeah. You got a cinder, <laughs> Kelly, in your car. I, I I have a lot more in common with Lindsey Graham. Well, he's than, got no one to clean up after him. <laughs> Lindsey Graham and President Biden. I don't have anything in common with President Biden. He's got a Corvette mm. and a garage. And yeah, all that. where's L- aviators? Lindsey Graham. <laughs> now he's. They got- had found out that there were classified information in Biden's home days before the 2022 election, and they said on it, "That's what I want to understand." And if you come to my house, you'll find Chick Fil A bags all over the floor, but you're not going to find any classified information. <laughs> If I ever got to interview Senator Lindsey Graham, I'd say, what's your order at Chick-fil-A? Yes. That would be my – cause, and then I would tell him my trick, my hack for dipping nuggets in three different sauces Ooh. at a time. Ew. <laughs> That is a disgrace. That's gross. You're mixing sauces. Do you think he eats in the – well – He's probably he probably has a driver. I wonder if he eats in the back of his car. He might. I can see. He eats in the closet. Well, he's got a lot of uh, he's got a lot of bags around the house mm-hmm. and nobody to pick up for him. So I, and when I was a bachelor, man, when I was bachelor, I had pizza boxes and stacked to the boxes. ceiling. Well, that's lens and Chick Fil A. He's a batch. And Chick, yeah, he's a bachelor. Chick Fil A bags all over the place. God, one time a woman came into my house. Ew. <laughs> <laughs>